I'm glad you guys have, have me out here for your, your team event. I call it an honor because I'm, I'm all about team. I'm all about individual. I'm all about getting our desired end. So to Dr. Poole, Mr. Poole, and Ms. Amber, I appreciate you guys for bringing me out. Um, one of the words that kept ringing in my mind when I, when I got the call to come talk to you guys uh, was identity. Identity. We have, myself included, a lot of instances we are falling asleep and forgotten our identity, our true power. So I'm not here today to really motivate you. I'm not here today to inspire you. I'm not here today to make you say, man, I can do anything I want to do. That's not my job today. My job today is to tell you who exactly you are, to tell you who, what exactly you possess. And when you find that out, guess what's going to happen? You will be motivated. You will be inspired. You will be ready to do anything that's possible that you can conceive in your mind. All right? So the word identity, you start thinking about identity. Identity, what does that mean? Identity. I mean, sometimes you have words that the dictionary just put out there and you, you start using those words in just your normal conversation. But have you ever stopped and thought about what that word really means, right? So we're in a team atmosphere. So the team can only go as far as the individual takes it, right? Just in that little uh, game you guys just played, there was a team game, but at the same time it was an individual game. You had to interact, but you had to make sure you knew something about yourself or knew something about the other person to create this whole smorgasbord of answers, right? It's a team effort, but it's individual identity. Now, one of the big misconceptions, and I love what Dr. Poole and Mr. Poole have done. They brought two, two different uh, uh, groups together to build this mega unit. One of the big misconceptions is that team, teams just happen. It just overnight just come together and it glued together and we're good to go. We all love each other and all these things are working. Yeah, let's go. You know, you know like, it doesn't work like that. You have to figure out what is that team's identity. You know, we set goals for where we're going. We set goals for who can work with each other. We set all those goals, these wonderful big goals, and you're excited, right? You can't wait. But how can you create a team identity when you don't know who you are? When you haven't tackled your issues, when you haven't even addressed your issues yet, right? I played with the Philadelphia Eagles. Wonderful team, wonderful organization. Beautiful organization. 2003, 2004, we went to the Super Bowl. It didn't matter. We were, we were a well-organized team. It did not matter if things went wrong the first half or second half, because we knew we were going to win. I played with three, all, uh, three Hall of Famers and a bunch of all pros. We knew we were going to win. It didn't matter. Like, when we stepped on the field, I don't care if we were playing the Giants. I don't care if we were playing the uh, Saints. I don't care who we were playing. The Patriots, we knew we were going to win when it's all said and done, right? So, 2004, we crushing, we just sweeping through everybody. Partying the whole nine. I'll say those stories for later. <laughs> <laughs> but, so, we sweeping through everybody. Go to the Super Bowl, we end up losing to the Patriots. Right. We think they cheated, but I don't know. <laughs> hey, don't put that on camera. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 I'm just saying, I'm just saying it's some fishy things. It was some fishy things going on the other side. Like, like what are y'all doing over there? Y'all know too many of our plays. They just know all the rules. I thought they could take them. Well, it's officially cheap. So check this out. So check this out. So guess what? This is after this Super Bowl. We get out, we get up, you know, pack up our bags, we go on home. Some guys going to the Pro Bowl, some guys, some guys going home to their families, right? The very next year, you would think that we're gonna run, we're gonna do the same thing. Like it's all gonna happen again. Man, we're probably the worst team in that division. We lost our identity. Everybody has separate plans. Everybody has separate visions. Everybody couldn't even deal with what they had going on with themselves. So how can you construct a team of individuals if you haven't really looked at what's going on with you? Right? That's a hard thing. Like, what's going on with me? Why do I want this thing? What's my real desire? What's really going on? Why am I repeating the same thing over and over again? 
until we, as individuals, start answering some of those questions, you might as well forget about team. You might as well forget about team. So structuring what it is that you want out of your life begins with you. And there's three simplistic steps that I live by now, that I live by. And it's, they're, you can say they're tough, but they're so wonderful. Where there's pressure, there's gold. Where there's pressure, there's diamonds. These three steps, especially the first step, will make you pressure yourself if you're willing to push toward the true identity of yourself. Your identity, I'm gonna tell you this real fast. There's a lot of noise. There's a lot of noise, man. Am I right? TV, social media, uh, family members. No, you can't do that. Sit still, you good. Just, just be average like us. Like, we fall into that, like, and that becomes your identity. It's a lot of noise. They tell you one thing, you receive it, and you start acting it, right? You never question, like, hmm, was my mom right on that thing? Could I be a little better than that? Most of us, it's accepted and open, right? Some things that happen in our childhood, we accept it, and we just keep rolling on, we stuff it in the, like, we stuff it back here, like, oh, we, we won't deal with that, because this is my identity, right? That's the way it operates. So you get, at, you become an a, a individual, and then that individual in the team, you bring in those same habits, those same mindset blocks, those same things into the team. And then wonder why you can't work with people. The wonder why y'all can't get these results y'all been pushing for. The wonder why you've been the same non-impactful individual in that team, right? I'ma just, do, I'ma do average. I'ma just do average, I do enough. I'll write half the note and see what they say. There you go. And go back. That's not finished. All right, let me do the rest. Average. Because you had to figure out what's your true identity, what you really have. And I'm going to get to that. So three points. There are three things. The first thing that you need to do when knowing, uh, figuring out your identity, but more so than anything, knowing what you want, because we all have a desire. We all have a true desire that we want to get to. And that is like engulfed in, in merged with our identity. That desire and our identity is the same thing. It's like one entity. So the first step is this. You have to be willing to acknowledge where you are. That sounds real cute, right? You got to be willing to acknowledge where you are. What does that mean? If I suck as a player, I suck. Yeah, man, you're good. Just, just keep going. You, you know, I'm good. I'll be all right. No, you suck, bro. <laughs> you stink. You can't catch, man. No, no, no. This is like, not, you know, you threw the ball a little too hard that time. Nah. Matter of fact, that sun was in my eye. No, bro, you suck because you dropped the ball in the winter. You dropped it in the fall. <laughs> you dropped it in the spring. That means you suck. That's acknowledging. All right? I got a quick story for you, and it's funny. I can laugh at it now. Matter of fact, I don't know if I really can laugh at that. Because it hurt my heart. So I got traded or cut four times. I got traded from the Philadelphia Eagles to the Minnesota Vikings. I don't know how many football fans out there are just follow football. I got cut from the Minnesota Vikings. I got cut from the Seattle Seahawks. I got cut from the Washington Redskins. And I got cut from the, uh, oh, I missed one. <laughs> That's five. Give me a high five, right? <laughs> from the Detroit Lions, right? That's five times. It's obvious there's something going on that they want to acknowledge. It's obvious. What are, you not, what are you not acknowledging about your game, man? Right? What's going on? So the first time with the Philadelphia Eagles, my agent called me. I never talked to my agent. And before I picked the phone up, I said, hey, I'm either getting cut or I'm getting traded. Pick the phone up. Hey, Billy, we're going to trade you. They're trading you to the Minnesota Vikings. Man, Minnesota? I don't know nothing about Minnesota. Get out there to Minnesota, right? I get to Minnesota, play the entire 2006 year, 2007 year, half of 2007 year, and if you guys know anything about football, before the season starts, they do major cuts, just like any company, major cutbacks, right? So, I walk into the facility the day of the last cuts. I'm like, okay, maybe if I go in the weight room, they won't find me, I'm in there working out, they can't find me to cut me, because I knew I was on the chopping block, right? Like, if I'm in the weight room, Pumping these weights, they'll say, well, you know, he's good, he's still working out. Nah, they came and found me. We got a guy, he's an assistant, he comes in, he says, hey, Billy, 
He tried to whisper because he knows what's up. They, um, they want to see him stay. Oh, <laughs> Man, I just want a house out here too. <laughs> so I get there, the general manager, he sits right in front of me. I sit down. This is our conversation, folks. He has his head down, he's just writing. And I'm like, you didn't want to see me, right? He's like, yeah, so what flight you want to go home on? <laughs> I said, wow. Oh, man. I said, no, nah, I just bought a house here, man. I'm going to settle here for a little bit. All right, cool. And then he slides me a sheet. And the sheet, when you get cut, it says, it says, um, Productivity, unsatisfactory, or it's like another one that says a number game. He said, productivity, unsatisfactory. He never looked me in my eyes. He slid the paper, and then once he finished, he said like this. Yeah, man. Well, good luck to you. Mm. Wow. Man, you talking about like, I walked out the office like, your first thought is like, man, who do you think you are? Yeah. Man, I, I, I'm gonna put these paws on you, right? <laughs> Can't do it. <that. laughs> Can't do that. So I walk out. I'm like, oh man, what do we do? This is crazy. And it, more so than anything, this is crazy the way it happened. So my mind starts first going, their fault, his fault. Should have did that. They should have did this. Well, if they wanted me, they would have did this, right? Going through all these things. Fast forward. Same thing with the Washington Redskins. I try to hide away from them. <laughs> Maybe they don't see me, man. I had an awesome game this last preseason game. They won't see me, you know. Doing my work, ah, my workout. Comes the game, he says, "Hey, uh, Billy, it was Steve Stills." Oh my god, <laughs> not again! I go upstairs. Lisa's a little more pleasant. They're like, Billy, hey, great job this all season. It's a members game, you know. We just paid two young guys, but we gotta let you go. We might bring you back second week. By this time, I'm like, man, you just do what you want to do. And of course, I say, well, it was my knee. I did this. They could have did this better. They paid two other guys and blah, blah, blah. Right? All that going on. Fast forward to Seattle. Right? We can go on for days with this. So, Seattle, get out to Seattle. I was so bitter. I was so bitter that these teams were cutting me. Right? I couldn't focus when I was in Seattle. I'm like, man, watching the Redskins. I'm an hour and some change away from home. My whole family can come up and see me. Now y'all cut me and I'm on all the way up to the West Coast. This is crazy. So I'm bitter, but I'm bitter and I'm starting. Mm. I'm bitter and they throwing me the ball. I'm bitter and I hate working, I hate doing everything. I'm in my situation and I'm bitter. I'm running, catching passes the whole time, bitter. So my whole demeanor is like, okay, practice, whatever, blah, 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 blah. All right? So I get out to practice one day, I'm like, all right, here we go. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they're gonna cut me soon, but I mean, I'm starting and catching passes and leading the team to lead in yards. I couldn't switch my mind. I was stuck. I, I had accepted what they were saying about me, right? I had accepted what I said about myself. So I'm doing my warm-ups and we start practicing. I'm running around, boom, boom, boom. They throw me the ball. Quarterback throws the ball, nearly takes my finger off. I would show you guys my finger, but it's pretty jacked up. Here it is. A little crooked finger here. The quarterback nearly takes my finger off and dislocates my finger, right? So I walk, walk back, they put it back in place the whole nine. A day or two later, guess what? Well, Billy, come to the office. We're going to give you seven today, but we got to bring a guy out that can play. You can't catch right now. So, cut. You talking about bitter? I'm like, oh, man. Teams are calling. They're like, hey, you, hey my agent, you, you, we want this guy. You, you, you come out and play with us. He's like, I was like, man, you know what? I need, I need to need some rest. I was so bitter. Fast forward, I'm out of the NFL. And then I'm like, man. I'm crying in the house. What's going on? Why is nobody calling me? What's going on? Like, I should be, I should be, like, I still be playing. I'm fast, I'm big, I'm strong. I should be on somebody's team. Oh, what's going on? I never acknowledge my, my thing in this situation. My mindset in this situation, I never acknowledged it. It was always somebody else's fault. It was always somebody else's, well, they could have did this better. I never say, hold up, man. Hold up. There's a pattern here. This, I'm the pattern. Where in my mind am I stuck? Now I'm at home, depressed. Can't figure this thing out. Lord, if you just give me another chance, I'll <laughs> <laughs> tell you what. If 
you just give me another chance, I'll tell you what, I'll serve you forever. <laughs> Y'all know how I go. They call prayer on Wednesday, guess who there? Me. I was there. They call prayer on Sunday morning, guess who there? Me. I'm not before. Suited and booted, ready. Hey, the praises go up, who dancing? Me. Because I'm thinking all this, all, this, all this should work. All this outside activity should work. You know what I mean? Like, hey, more often? Okay. I, that's me. It should work. But what I did not recognize when we go back to identity, we're looking for everything, everything outside of ourselves. You have forgotten your power. Who took your power? Who did you allow to take your power? You thought it was everything outside of you, didn't you? You thought it was all the effects of life that conditioned you to be this person. You just went to sleep and you forgot who you were. You forgot that everything starts up here. The reason I was at home at church dancing and screaming and crying because I made it in my mind I was fed up with the NFL. I'm tired of traveling. I'm tired of going to hotel to hotel. I'm tired of scrapping for a position. So guess what happened? The witch is my command. Get up out of here. You have forgotten your identity. Everything in this life is based off what you feel, what you feel, and what you see and hear. And when those things connect, you will have it. So trust and believe. Your life is designed the way it is right now. There is a certain thing you see Feeling here. An image begots a feeling, or a feeling begots an image. And when you call that thing real to your heart, it will be. You will have exactly what you asked for. I got exactly what I asked for. And then I have the nerve to start crying and screaming when I got it. What am I saying? If you're crying, and screaming about your relationships, step back and pick something else. If you're crying or screaming about your position in life, step back and choose something else. It's really that simple. With the same vigor and the same tenacity and the same energy that you say you didn't want to be in the NFL no more, use that for something else. So I had an identity crisis when I got out. I was like, what am I? What the? I've been playing football since sixth grade. What am I? That's all I knew. I lost myself. And who is yourself? Yourself is your own wonderful, beautiful imagination. Whatever you can conceive, whatever you can see yourself doing, whatever you can feel in your heart, that's what you will have. If you can only see yourself at this level, you will have that level. Mm -hmm. Dr. Poole and Mr. Poole they start a company based on seeing himself doing something else. They say, you know what? I think we can do this. I can see myself helping these people in a different position. I can see myself doing this in a different way. Same with you guys. Is a relationship you, you tired of? Is something in your past that you tired of thinking about? We'll go back and attack it, because I know I had to. I acknowledged where I was, and it did not feel good, but it was the best place out there. We talking about, y'all think it's a game. We talking about getting out the NFL and just chugging, driving, just taking on driving to Williamsburg, drunk. Because I couldn't deal with what I was going in my head. I, won't, I, I was not willing to acknowledge what I had to acknowledge. But the beauty of it, though, once you do, you take control of yourself again. And all those outside influences, mothers, fathers, brothers, sisters, co-workers, any relationship, because this thing's all about relationships. It ain't about money, it's about relationships. All that, all those relationships that has infected, infected your life, whether good or bad, that you listen to, that design your life, you now take control of what is that, what it is that I want. So when you acknowledge, it's not to stay there. It's just being honest with yourself. 
Why you can't be honest with yourself? What are you scared of? What are you scared of? Because I know I was scared. I was stricken in fear. I didn't want to touch that stuff. I didn't want to, I didn't want to, I want to act like it never happened. Right or wrong for me, right or wrong for somebody else. I'm going to act like I didn't say that. Now go back and acknowledge that. That's what I was, and that affected my NFL career. And when I got up, I had to go back over here and say, that's what it was. Try to act like it was all about catching football. Try to act like it's all about helping these, these, uh, this youth. It's about you, and when you acknowledge where you are, man, you'll sweep the city. Danville and Richmond, and surrounding counties. They'll be knocking down the door, because they want to be healed. That's all we want to be, we want to be healed. We tired of pain. But you gotta acknowledge pain first before you be healed. That's the way it works. So, when you acknowledge that, you should smile. Because now you're waking up. You're remembering who you are. You're waking up. So you write that thing, whatever it is, on a piece of paper. This is what I was. Notice that now. No longer who I am. I'm gonna ball it up. I'm gonna burn it up. I'm gonna bury it. I'm getting rid of it. It's over. Now I'm going back to myself. That, that part is done. Y'all like, nah, that ain't because you still got to deal with that. No, that part is done. Because now I'm looking at that stuff from a different perspective. Based on the second step, what it is I choose I want to be now. What it is how I want to choose and see life now. Mindset. How do I want to choose? How do I, I want to affect and impact people now? What do I want? From simply put, a new car? A new relationship with my father? My mother? My wife? My kids, my coworkers, what it is that I want now. And you choose it consciously. Remember, all of it starts here and connects here. So you take that and you choose. That's it. Once you choose, it's chosen. Once you choose, it's chosen. And here comes the best part about it. You create that frenzy. You become psycho on it. You become drunk in it. You drink it every day. You eat it every day. Because now you got to condition your mind to this new person that you just chose. So and you choose big. Whatever your mind is big, you choose big. Because when you choose big, you've never been there before. So you can't attach anything to it. You can't attach all your old ways to it. You can't attach your old life to it. You choose it so big. So when you look back on that thing, you just balled up and burnt up. You see it in a different perspective. And now guess who's healing that self? You are. You are a new person. The frenzy. You create the frenzy. When I was going to the NFL, just like right here, my whole bedroom wall was full of players, football players, successful people. I used to like, oh, that'd be cool if I can go there. <laughs> oh, shoot, look at him. Oh. And I acted out on the bed, catching the ball. It went from acting it out until I really started believing it. I caught myself in this frenzy. It's like a little spinning wheel. I think I can have it. No, I think I can have that car. <laughs> I don't have that much, but no, I don't. No, you know what? I think I can have that car. You know what? I can see I can feel myself driving that car. You know what? Oh, that'd be dope. We can go to, if we can go on a vacation in that car, y'all know how y'all do. <laughs> Most of us stop right there and then go back. <laughs> Keep going. Keep living it. Hey, what would I be doing in that car? All right, so we'll drive down to the beach. <laughs> we got the cool in the back. Oh, that's so dope. Guess what you're doing? You remove yourself from your old situation and you're living in your new situation. The mind does not know the difference. Remember, you gotta know your true identity. The mind does not know the difference. You're now living in this new life, in this new car. And guess what's gonna happen? It's gonna match up to you. Same thing with my football. I didn't know how, when I got drafted by the Eagles, man, I promise y'all, I promise you, when I stepped foot on the campus, I was like, yo, why did I get here? I really sat there, I was in my, my apartment, like, yo, how did I get here? I mean, I know I was fast, I could catch, I was, but there was a bunch of guys in the neighborhood and they do that. They were better than me, actually. How did I get here? I don't know. Back then, I didn't know. I don't know how I did it. I lost my identity. I started accepting the gift. The gift was the big thing, and not the giver. So that's why my NFL career looked like that, because I didn't know the identity was within me. So once you choose, Create that frenzy. Eat it over and over and over again. Even if, even if I walk up to you and say, hey, you can't have that. You can't have that. You should be like, okay, 
We go right down to the beach. And then you ride right past you're like, hey, hey, remember me? That's how you do it. You just keep reenacting it. Keep reenacting it. Keep reenacting it in your mind until it becomes real. And can't nobody tell you anything different. I never forget in college, I was eating lunch with this girl. And she was like, sort of like, I don't know what I would do after my college. And she said, what are you doing? I said, I'm going to NFL. She was like, how do you know? And I was like offended. I was like, how you don't know? I, I, I ate it so much that I knew I was going. This is what I did. Like, I'm like, how you don't know what you're going to do? Like, you don't have a, you don't have a, you said you're going to be an astronaut? OK. What's he talking about? Really? NFL? You're the slowest dude in the neighborhood. Oh, man. <laughs> you can't even catch. Back then, I couldn't catch. You can't even catch. Pick him last. He's drunk, man. Get drunk on your passion. Get, not even your passion. Get drunk on what you want. Eat it. Put pictures up. Change your verbal conversation to yourself. When you hear that negative, uh, you be like, nah, I can do it. It's going to feel fake, but keep doing it. Over time, it just, you just, it just is what it is. I'm going to leave y'all with this story. I think it's one of the dopest stories ever. <laughs> this is me. I like telling it. So, anybody has seen The Dark Knight? Yeah. The Dark Knight? Yeah. Watch the <laughs> Dark Knight? The Dark Knight. One of the dopest characters ever made. The Joker. <laughs> Sinister, man. He had you to feel like, yo, this dude is crazy, bro. Psycho, man. So, my man Heath Ledger, who has sadly passed away after that movie, he wanted to see previous, the, the next movie on. He passed away, right? But if you look at the track record, how he created the Joker, it's amazing. He did a mind trip on himself. It was amazing. So he, when they saw production, or even before production, the director came to him with the Batman script. He said, you know, Joker tried out, uh, Keith Ledger tried out for the Batman. And uh, the director was like, nah, you don't fit Batman. You know, you're the pretty boy. Talking about what it would feel like to be a crazy person. A sinister person, started drawing out figurines of what the Joker looked like, putting on the clothes, walking around like, acting off the character in a hotel room by himself, no outside influences, creating this new person, right? Look how dynamic this is, man. Creating this new, ah, yeah, starling the whole nine, right? All right, so they get into production now, actual filming. He's now the Joker. So anytime they say, go, he's writing the character. What he would do before that they say go, he would go back to his notes, Start acting it out. They, they say, go, he's in character now, right? That whole time he's filming, he couldn't sleep. I can only figure why. He's acting like a crazy person, a sister, crazy, dynamic person that's destroying everything. He's always, I'm not going to say always in character towards the people that are seeing him, but in his mind, he's the Joker, man. Like, how far you got to go to get that crazy, right? Yeah. He left himself no boundaries. If you look at Denzel, Every movie, he acts the same, right? Because he don't want to get too far in character. Like, he'll do the same thing with those, with do the same little smooth walk, you know, all that. He has to leave something of himself so he can come back. But he left. He went all the way in. Even though when they say break, he was joking and playing with his cast members, but it is in his head. He's constantly thinking about what does the Joker would do next? What would he do? How would he act? What would he say, right? Movie's done. He's taking meds to go to sleep. He creates his and he never wakes up, right? That's a sad story. He couldn't sleep, right? And people say, well, you know, he wasn't always in character. Or it doesn't matter what people say. His mind was gone. He had created a, new, a whole new individual. And that's sad, but I got excited when I found that out. I said, hold up, man. If this actor can create a whole new life on acting, what can we do? Going back to identity. You are what you say you are. Aren't you fed up with the same stuff in your life? Won't you write yourself a script and start it again? I was fed up. I woke up one day and said, man, really? I love you, man. I love you, dude. After all you've been through, I love you. I said, man, I hate my life. That's a dynamic, right? How you love yourself and hate your life? It's real, because we just walking through this life. We're the power. I love you, but I hate my life, so I decided to change it. That's why I'm standing in front of y'all now. You have the ability to choose what it is you want to be to a strong degree, and what you choose, you will be. 
even when the outside influences say you can't be that, act it out just like he, for your good. Whatever you choose, because guess what? Which I don't know, you're choosing it now. You, you are a character now. You're doing it now. You're just so, so stuck in habit that you don't know it. Wake up. Wake up and take control. So whatever it is that you need to be first, now you know your identity. Now you can start reconstructing your individual lives on purpose, on a daily basis. And then when you get with your team, so dope. Two plus two equals a million when you know what the identity is. I just made some math up just now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Last but not least, guys, I always tell my guys, anybody I talk to, I tell them this, and I'm so serious. I need you, each and every one of you guys, in here that has heard my voice, I need you to become who you said you would be. I need you to go back and address those things that you've been carrying through your life. I need you then to choose what it is you want to become. I need you then to go crazy and drunk and become that person, that individual that you deserve to be. I need it. Because when I see you again, I'm like, yo, she really did it. I'm getting chill once thinking about it. Like, yo, she really did it. Y'all heard the person that I know. I'm going to be this. And then a year later, you see him like, yo, she really did it. There's two ways you can go. You can go jealous, or you can be like, all right, let me get on my, let me get on my grind. For me, I need to see it, so I'll be like, yo, I can go to higher levels too. I need you, each and every one of you guys, to become who you said you will be. Your team needs you. The people we are servicing need that. This country needs that. Seriously. So become it.